Welcome, everybody. Uh, as our last session for today, at least in this room, we're going to hear from Alex Long from Indeed about real-world experience. And this is the best talks, right? Uh, not that our talks are not great, but hearing from actual customers from real-world experience is always the best. So uh, uh, about you know performance gotchas of replicas on multiple data centers. Uh, since this is the last session, we might... I think we can go over an extra few minutes at the end. Yeah, so maybe. please hold questions till the end, uh, and we'll, we'll be able to stay here. Sure. So hi, my name's Sam, for everyone. Um, I've been working with the Indeed team for about two years now. And to set the stage for this account, they um, about 50% of everything that Indeed does is built on Mongo today. Um, they've been using Mongo, I think, for over 10 years. And they use community up until this year, mm -hmm. and he's gonna tell you the story about that. Um, right. So when MongoDB kind of looks at this account and when we started working with you guys as a whole, they really are super users of Mongo. So. Super users of Mongo. <laughs> no, truly, truly. And Alex and Manon in the back are the team that really, I think, set you guys up for success long term, right. so. Yeah, thank you, that's Sam. That's all, I wanted to set the stage. <laughs> thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. Uh, and questions till the end, and with that, Alex, take it off. Yeah. How are you doing so far today? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your speaker for the topic, performance gotchas of replicas spanning multiple data centers. So the goal of today's presentation is to share with you some real-world experiences, as, as they say, uh, some performance issues you may encounter with replica sets and shattered clusters when you span your replicas over multiple data centers. Hopefully, my presentation will bring some awareness and certain operation issues that may arise often and would help you to spot troubleshoot and identify prob performance problems and other kinds of latencies uh, very quickly. A bit of background about myself. My name is Alex Leong. I work as a senior cloud database engineer with Indeed. Uh, I've been working with MongoDB for seven years now, starting from version 2.6. Uh, latest version is 4.2. We go slowly upgrade. I know we're a little bit far behind, but we need to do more upgrades uh, later this year, and also moving to MongoDB Atlas. That was fast track everything. All right, so uh, let's get started with some information about Indeed. Uh, that's my company. So we help people get jobs. That's what we do best. Some fun facts about the company. We're the first number one job website in the world. 96% of Fortune 500 companies partner with Indeed. Uh, we work with 3 million companies that use Indeed to hire employees. Uh, we have about 25 million open positions at Indeed.com at any one time. Uh, we have accumulated over the years 225 million resumes on Indeed systems, and we have 250 million unique visitors every month. I guess that makes us number one. Uh, again, we help people get jobs. And, so uh, there's the reasons for multiple data center environment. I know some of these are basic, but I just want to go through real quick. Uh, first is resiliency. You want to uh, avoid a single point of failure, obviously. Uh, power outage, sometimes ice storm, uh, it can happen. And when you work with multiple data centers, uh, network outage can be quite common. So this is something you would have to deal with, unfortunately. Uh, so another reason is you want your data being close to customers and job seekers location and in the case of Indeed. Uh, so you want to have a faster response and uh, overall, overall uh, better user and user experience. So uh, performance considerations in multiple data centers environment. So we are going to show you some live, some examples, not live, sorry, examples from on-premise and from examples from on-cloud. Uh, initial sync. Initial sync has to do with when you're adding a new member, you want your sync to complete as fast as possible. That's usually the case. Uh, a right concern is where you write your data to more than one data bearing node. Uh, the reason being uh, you want to minimize the chances of, uh, of data loss due to your primary failover, and then you roll back your primary 
that could result in data loss. So by writing to more than one data bearing nodes, you minimize the chances of that happening. So sync topology, uh, in theory, any node can sync from any other node, but the question becomes, which is the best node to sync your data from? Uh, we are talking about replication node to node here. So changes in sync sources. Now, this is something which can happen uh, in, a, in your cluster without anybody knowing. Uh, if, unless you look at the MongoDB log or notice some changes in performance issues, uh, you, may not, you may not realize it, right? Uh, sometimes you have performance issues and this is one of the things that you might want to investigate depending on the situation. So replication lags, of course, uh, with data centers being so far apart from one another, uh, it, it can happen, especially if you are going from the US to, let's say, uh, Asia Pacific South, like a place like Sydney that's far away, and we can help you to speed things up. So uh, in this started with on-premise data centers globally. Uh, we have all these data centers in the USA, Europe, Asia Pacific, and Oceania. So we're kind of like global uh, clusters. So uh, at the moment, we are busy migrating our on-premise to on-cloud data centers. I think we are like 75 to 80% done. You will notice that when it comes to uh, cloud AWS, uh, there's a concept called availability zone, availability zone, AZ. And with AZ, it gives you a, an extra dimension on how you can design your topology. And we will go through that uh, in the coming slides. So let's look at some basics on on-premise versus cloud AWS. So normally when we talk about on-premise, you're talking about just one data center within a city or metropolitan area and region. Because setting up a data center is obviously very costly and not many companies would want to set up you know, uh, more than one within a single region or city. Uh, the ping times between premises on premise data centers can be 400 to 100 milliseconds. This is just within the USA. Uh, it all depends on the distance, right? How many miles apart from one another. Uh, with AWS Cloud, you come across regions and again, availability zones, AZ. Uh, ping times between AZs as from the AWS documentation is between one and two milliseconds, but actually it's more like zero point something, less than a millisecond, say. And ping times between regions is about 12 to 60 milliseconds within the USA uh, regions. So uh, with on-premise, you have to do everything yourself with compute and storage, networking, and so on, MongoDB software. What with AWS Cloud, you take away the top three and just do your MongoDB software version and your, your backups by yourself. So initial sync, right? So let's say you have this cluster here and you have a Pacific base nodes on the left and then on the right, on the top, you have a central north and then the south. You add a new member to your cluster replica set in central south, right? So the status is startup two. That's your initial sync, right? So the question is, where would the new node sync from? So probably a central south location using the nearest logic, but not always, okay? Don't, don't assume, never count on that. So it's better to verify uh, as soon as you add your new member with the RS status command. And if necessary, you run the RS sync from uh, with a host name port to uh, pick the best sync source for you, okay? So this one example here, uh, you have overriding the sync source. So I have a uh, Atlantic node secondary on the left and then my initial sync in Pacific 2 host. So when I started my my, when I do my uh, add member, the uh, Mongo uh, picks Atlantic one in this case. So it's not the ideal, right? Because you're talking about far away distance. It will take a long time for you to complete your initial sync process. So to rectify that, what you should do is do a RS sync from command and point it to the Pacific, right? Uh, now, you want to do this very early on during your initial sync. Uh, because 
as soon as you redirect your sync sources to a new node, whatever progress that you have uh, made so far, whether it's hours ago or days ago, would be thrown away and Mongo has to restart the initial sync all over again from zero. Now, uh, I want to say that in Mongo 4.4, there's a new feature called uh, resumable initial sync, but that is only happen when uh, your original, there's a problem between your original pair of syncing nodes, right? If you were to change your sync source, uh, that feature is not going to help you, right? So keep that in mind. And this is from the MongoD logs itself. Uh, when you change your sync sources, uh, you can grab for the word REPL or the keyword sync from MongoD log, and you will see all these entries in there. So uh, catching up on replication lags. So uh, I have, a, in this example, I have my Pacific node here is about 10 hours behind, 36,000 36, seconds behind the primary. It could be due to this server down for a long time, server maintenance, uh, somebody brought it down, and then uh, maybe nine and a half hours later, they bring it up again. So you're 10 hours behind. It could be a network failure, it could be a disk failure and so on, right? So uh, catching up the replication lag is, is, is uh, you can speed things up. So what you do is on the, uh, you can increase the wire tiger cache size. So in this case, I started with 32 gigabytes. Then I increased my wire tiger to 48 gigabytes. And you will see that, see that your initial sync, uh, not initial sync, the catching up of replication lag will progress very much faster. Uh, just be careful when you set this wire tiger cache size, do not overdo it because you still need to leave some, uh, some memory for the operating system buffer. If you overdo it, you get ne uh, negative results, right? So in some cases, and, and this all depends on your workload, on your network, on, on, on what type of activity is, is going on between in your cluster. Uh, sometimes I, I speed these things up and then uh, it catches up in less than half an hour. So very often, I'm, I'm an on-call DBA. I get page for replication lag. <laughs> and what I do is uh, I see the lag and say, OK, uh, if there's some extra memory, I'm going to bump them up. And then uh, I could go back to sleep within like a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, don't have to stay through the whole night to wait for the catch up to complete. So uh, changes in sync sources, right? So uh, on the top, you have the central north base nodes. And then the blue node is central north. And then the only outlier here is the central south location. So these three nodes here are what we call local. So everything is syncing from locally, uh, except for this guy right here to so go across this guy here. Uh, now, keep in mind that I, I'm not showing you all the members of the cluster, right? Some of you may ask, oh, why do only four members, right? But just for illustration purposes, I'm just showing you what is necessary to, to get to the point. So at T1, you have this. Uh, uh, sync topology, what we call. Uh, and then at T2, the blue node is syncing from the south node, right? Maybe because this node was busy at the time or there was there were some problems with it and this one would change sync sources. So MongoDB uh, does this automatically. And, and again, you may not notice it uh, unless you look at the MongoDB log. So at indeed, we call this a, a change a sync topology. It's, it's a term which I I think I invented <laughs> uh, just where each node sings from, right? So let's look at some on-premise examples. So uh, we were talking about write concern, right? W2, meaning that you need to write to the primary plus one other data bearing node, which obviously is a secondary, uh, to fulfill your writes before it goes back to the application, right? Uh, if you write to the primary and it has a problem writing to any of these secondaries, your write application may not return to the application. Uh, if you put a timeout, it will time out, of course, right? or it will stay there indefinitely. So, so in this case, uh, I have this thing topology here at T1. So, so the ping times between the south and south locations is one millisecond because they're the same data center, and the ping times between south and north, let's say, is 60 milliseconds, right? So, uh, by the way, this is a, a, a customized RS status script. Uh, I like to do my RS status this way so that I can see each member on its own line without having to scroll through many, many pages. And it just gives me at a glance what this sync situation 
is. So, so very handy. And again, there are other secondaries here, not going to talk about that. The main thing is we're going to talk about this. So, uh, so say given this scenario here, the, uh, the normal right time, the SLO for this application is 40 millisecond, which includes the one millisecond between them. So it's, it's say it's 40 millisecond, right? So the next slide is a continuation. So you have the same situation. Now, uh, at T2, you notice this central south node is now sinking from the central north node. Uh, it does, instead of sinking from this one. So what happens, yes, you have the same ping times as before. So what happens is that uh, you are going to have to add uh, 60 milliseconds to your uh, SLO 40 milliseconds. You see a, a, a delay in your rights because it is got to go cross DC to fulfill the W2 right concern. So this is an optimal, a suboptimal cross DC. So what we do about it, uh, you can run the command sync correction, just RS sync from with a host name port, and it will, this node will again sync back from the same uh, primary as it was before. So this is what you will encounter at T2 plus one. So if you look at a performance graph here, over here is time and over here is the latency. So you see that at 11.56, your milliseconds of writes goes from 40 milliseconds to 100 and so milliseconds. So of course, there's a, performance, there's a performance implication here, right? Your writes are delayed. And this plateau here will go on forever. Uh, and indeed, we come across this plateau happening sometimes over multiple days, even go through the weekend, Monday, and nobody complain until Monday, and then somebody complain and say, hey, racks are slow. So as a DBA, uh, it's not very ideal that your customers are telling you there's a problem instead of you being proactive and knowing there's a problem exists already. So, so it's very important. Uh, so here's a single source changes at 11.56, and when you take action to do the RS sync from sync correction, uh, you will immediately get to see that the performance improve right away. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, when you go to the uh, MongoDB log, if you grab the, the keyword sync, you will see that the timestamp of your sync events we will line up exactly at 11.56 and 11 and, and 12.03 in this case, right? So a lot, I come across this problem a lot of times uh, at Indeed. Um, whenever somebody complained to me, certainly there's an increase in right performance. I would say more than 99% of the time is because of changes in sync sources. So it happens, it happens just under the hood, you know. And what we do at Indeed is uh, we create a custom monitor to check for any changes every 15 minutes or so. And if there is any changes in sync source, we execute the RS sync from command from the script automatically and it will self heal. So, so it's better than waiting over two, three days for somebody else to tell you. So, uh, you know, they don't have that problem anymore. Of course, it all depends on what you want to do, W2, W3, and, and so on. So at this point in time, you might ask, what about disabling chaining? So in, in MongoDB, if you do an RS con config, you will see that the chaining allow is default setting is true. So this set can be set to false. What happens when you set the chaining allow equals to false is that every secondary will only sync from the primary node. So, uh, however, you need to be cautious when you use this. This is straight from the MongoDB documentation itself. Uh, chain replication can reduce load on a primary. So, another way of saying this is that uh, if you set chaining allow to force, you can increase load on a primary. So, so be caution, be caution when you are cautious when you use this feature. So let's look at some on-premise examples. So you have a central south nodes on top and then central north location. Uh, in this case, we have 35 millisecond 
there's a normal write time for the application. Ping time between north and south is 60 milliseconds. So what happens when this secondary here goes down? So to fulfill your W2, you have to have these two, these two nodes here, right? And you're going to have to add 35 plus 60 milliseconds of the ping time. This is roughly about 95 milliseconds increase, uh, increase to 95 milliseconds. So you have a straight uh, write latency straight, straight away. This is just approximately, so it might be 94, 90, 90 or 92, but it's just for illustration purposes. So the solution, what can you do? You can replace this node, but of course, uh, if you were to create a new node, then you have to wait for the initial thing to complete. Depending on how big the node is, it can take a few minutes, hours, days, or you can temporarily uh, change your application uh, to use right concern of one until the node is ready or, or down secondary node recovers. So this is, these are two ways to, to resolve the issue. So let's look at W3. So you have this primary on the south, this on the south, and this is south as well. So the ping times between north and south is again 60 millisecond. So uh, you would see that with the W3, these three nodes here with the asterisk is able, are able to satisfy the W3 locally or within the same DC. So this is what you want to see. This is the ideal scenario, right? So with changes in sync source, now that this, this uh, central south location is syncing from the central north, which of course syncs to primary. Now you have to go cross DC to fulfill, to fulfill your W3 remotely with cross DC. So you, this means that you're adding uh, 60 milliseconds to your normal regular write times. So there are two, two solutions to rectify this one. So what you do here, you go to the shell of this node here and you execute this RS sync, sync from command. Uh, it goes back to, to this one. Or you can just restart this instance. MongoDB will restart and re-evaluate the, the sync logic so that it will, hopefully it will go back to the, uh, to the same node as, as before. I, I prefer to use the solution number one because first of all, it's less intrusive and it's more direct. You, you get exactly what, you, what you're asking for, right? So let's look at some examples with AWS Cloud. So again, you have right concern of two, AZ1, AZ, AZ2. So, so the ping times between AZs of the same, same AZs is one millisecond. And so happened that the ping times between AZ1 and AZ2s are also one millisecond. There's, there's little or no differences between AZs of the same region. So you have this situation here right now, and then the optimal write time is 35 millisecond. So you have a changes in sync source. Now you got to go uh, across AZ, but since you're in the same region, you're only going to add one millisecond to your write. So it's negligible. So no action is needed in this case. So let's look at the same region situation again. You have AZ1 and AZ2. Uh, again, taking times, just as a reminder, 35 milliseconds. So when this node goes down, now your W2 is going to be satisfied between these two nodes here, one in AZ1 and one in AZ2. And again, you're just going to add one millisecond to your right, right times. Again, it's one millisecond is negligible. So no action is needed. You, people normally, um, barely notice it. So let's look at different regions now. So at the top two nodes, I have US West 2 and then US East 1. Now, when you go across uh, uh, regions, the ping times increases substantially, right? Because East and West, they are so far apart from one another. So when you have changes in sync source, what happens is that you're going to add the uh, 70 millisecond to your normal write time, 35 millisecond. So you get 105 milliseconds. So this is the same as though you have a separate on-premise DCs that are far apart from one another. This is what you're going to experience. So different region. Uh, again, I have the same US West 2 and US East 1 ping times. So when the node on AZ1 goes down, so 
this node is these two nodes are going to, uh, across across region to satisfy the W2 right concern, and you have to add 70 milliseconds to your right times. Let's talk about right concern of W majority. So W majority is is a it's a, it's a special case, I would say. Uh, I've tested with W8. I don't know what's the maximum MongoDB has, maybe W10 or 20 or 50 or whatever. I never go that far, but I've tested with W8 and unless you have eight data bearing nodes, Mongo is not gonna to return to your application unless you have eight, eight nodes uh, already written to. So the majority is a special case. So let's look at this example. You have nine members in a cluster and as you all know, uh, there are only seven working members in a cluster that MongoDB allows you. Let's say you're using W4. With W4, any members can acknowledge your rights. So you have one primary and then three secondaries to acknowledge your rights. So you can have any four of any nine members data bearing nodes will acknowledge, right? Not the arbiter, arbiter won't, won't help you, but uh, four out of nine with W4. With W majority, you see here, only voting members can acknowledge. So uh, in this case, you need four out of seven voting members, which is the maximum to acknowledge. You have two, two members less as far as uh, writing acknowledgement is concerned. So example two, ex uh, eight members in a cluster, uh, five voting members, five voting members in a cluster, W3, so any three out of eight members can do the acknowledgement and any three out of five voting members you would be required to do the acknowledgement, W majority. So there's a difference between majority and W two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth, right? So, so majority is always a, a special case. You're, you're bounded by this seven here, as you will see in the slides later on. So, so with on-premise, uh, on the left, I have central south nodes, and on the right, I have Pacific nodes here. And you will see that I have three words, one here, one here, and one here. So what happens when, so you need two out of three voting members for W majority, right? So W majority, two out of three. And let's say there's a DC issue at the central south location in the yellow bubble. So you will lose your primary because this one member stand alone. You cannot do anything. You cannot vote itself to become a, a primary because that's not, that's not enough majority. Uh, so what happens is that you have to, uh, your, your rights are going to be blocked, first of all, because there's no primary. And you have to intervene and go into the secondary here and execute and make these two, two members that were originally non-voting into voting members and do a RS reconfig with a force option. You can do RS reconfig using the force option on a secondary to change your, your, your topology in regards to priority, words, and, and anything else, right? So there's an intervention required in this case. So, and then you have three out of five, you have three here, and then these two, even though they are down, they are still, you have three out of five voting members, so your rights will succeed again. So, okay. Now let's look at how we are going to lay out all the voting members for W majority right concern. So you have two votes in the Central South DC and one in Pacific. So when the Central South data center goes down, what you can do, you can add two more votes to your Pacific members, and then you will have majority three out of five again. Or alternatively, you can remove one from this vote here, this node here. You would log in to one of these nodes and do the uh, RS reconfig here, right? So you can remove one from one from the member based in Central South and uh, and from one you increase to to two at one here from here to, to this one right so so that's that's what you can do you can either do this or you can either do this notice that this is two one and this one two they are just the the reverse of of each other right. So again, another example with a three, two, 
So if Central South goes down, you add two members here to become four. Now you have majority. Add two members to the Pacific DC member here. Or you can uh, just add one to two, become three, and minus one from three to two, become two and three. So again, three, two, and two, three, the, the opposite of each other. Okay, let's look at another example, four, three. So central south goes down. Oops, you cannot add any more because maximum is seven. You cannot add this to become five. There's, there's no way MongoDB will allow you to do that. So what you do, instead you would just uh, decrease this four to three and increase this three to four. So now you have your majority on this side here to fulfill your uh, W majority right constant, four out of seven in this case. Again, it's the reverse of the first one. So let's add another data center to the equation here.